Hello there everyone, it's Carol here from the Crafty Emporium. Welcome to, the, to today's Mindful Monday video. <sighs> now then, I'm going to warn you. <laughs> this maybe doesn't look as though it's been very relaxing this morning. <laughs> but I've had a whale of a time. Um, you will need to cover your work surface is completely if you don't want to get your hands this grubby you may need to wear gloves <laughs> oh my what a mess to get into um so that's my introduction to today's mindful monday video i'm going to go and wash up have some lunch and then I'm going to come back and show you what I did. So I'll see you in a little bit. Hello there, welcome back. Okay, I've had my lunch, I've washed my hands. As you can see, they're not, they've still got some ink on them, but they're not as bad as they were. Now, before I start, I'm going to tell you that this is going to be a two, two part video. Um, because you need time to play with, with this particular version that I'm going to be showing you um, I because of the quote that I want to use and I'll come to that in a moment I need a surface that is completely flat right so no texture to it at all because I want to be able to write and stamp on it and, and stuff like that um, so as I say I'm, I'm I'm no expert at this and I was inspired by Diane Reevely's video uh, about ghosting okay so I'll put the link in the description box down below because obviously she's been doing it a very long time um, so she's more adept at doing it than I am and I followed the video and I had a go and it didn't quite work out and there was all sorts of reasons as to why it didn't work out, which I'll come to in a moment. And it's taken a fair bit of playing to be able to achieve what I wanted to achieve, okay? And you need that time as well to play. Um, and whilst I was playing, I was thinking about the quote that I want to use and as I was creating these backgrounds it inspired me as to what sort of look and colour I was going to go for. Okay, let's let's get down to my quote. So my quote is and, and surprisingly this I heard this first of all from um Stedman. Stedman Graham uh, who is Oprah's partner and the quote is if you do the same thing every day the outcome will always be the same and I chose this quote because there were there have been times in my life where you know I've run the Facebook group a certain way I've done the same kind of videos on YouTube the numbers were increasing the participation in the group wasn't increasing and so it, it's a case of trying to find different ways to advance, to go forwards. Um, because if, if you're staying where you are and it's not working, then you obviously need to change something. All right. Now, this quote to me, that was the bit that resonated. But when I actually started thinking about it, I thought that was quite a negative look at the quote. And I thought, well... There is a positive view to this quote as well. And the positive of this quote is that if you're doing something and something is working, then yeah, keep it going. So if you do the same thing every day, the outcome will always be the same. And we can apply that to all of our lives, not just to me and my business. So as a for instance, if you're finding that exercise is helping you with mobility and weight loss, then you know that you've got to keep that going because it's obviously working. If you're finding that the diet that you're eating is helping you to lose weight, and again, this is another area of my life that I have to look at quite regular. If, it, if you're losing weight, 
because of the diet that you're on, it's obviously working. So if I keep doing the same thing every day, the outcome will always be the same. If I keep eating the same foods and I'm losing weight, then that's going to continue. Now, there will come a point where it becomes a negative because it's not working anymore. And so that's when you have to up your game, change things around a bit and do something a bit different. So that is partly of what it meant to me. So this is what I wrote down. If I keep repeating the same habits, then nothing will change. That could apply to relationships. Keep choosing the wrong person to be in a relationship with. It's not working. You obviously keep choosing the same kind of person and it's not working. Um, find a different path to reach the goal. If the path you are on isn't getting you there. There is both positive and negative connotations to this statement. Negative, if it's not working, then fix it. And if it's positive, if it's working, then keep repeating. All right. So that was why I chose this quote, because it, it fitted in with my business ideas and, and how things are going. And also in my personal life, I've given up on relationships. Forget that bit. But I've got to concentrate on the diet and the exercise and stuff. I'm not losing weight doing what I'm doing. So I need to up my game, change the rules a bit, change the game to get it to start going forward again. All right. So that that's the plan is that I want to do a quote where I can put these words on and then I want to do a positive and a negative side so I can list some of the positives in my life that are working and also by the same token, some of the negatives in my life that are not working that I maybe need to address. OK, so that's why I want a smooth, flat surface. Now, oh, so, yeah, a little diagram. So this was, this was my rough drawing on, on the back of my card. So as you can see, I've, I've put each of the words into blocks. Um, and then I thought of, originally I thought of dark colours, so maybe from a blue, fade through to a green, and then maybe fade through to a yellow. Uh, and then I saw the ghosting video by Diane Reevely. Um, so it's ended up not going from dark through to light. Um, but anyway, there we go. Now, as you know, hang on, slow of tea. As you know, I started off this journey using the Arteza mixed media pad. Well, I found that when I followed Diane's uh, tutorial, it wasn't working properly on this paper. Now, again, I mentioned this before. It has a smooth side and a rough side. And I tried it on both sides of the paper. And it, I just could not get it to work properly. All right. So Diane obviously uses her own paper pads or her own books. So she must use a specific kind of paper. And I don't know what that is. Maybe someone who is watching this video does know and can put that in the comments below. So I then went on to experiment with this was just plain card, just thin plain card that I get from my local hobby craft that I sometimes print my digital kits on. So I had to play on that as well. I also had a go at doing it on cartridge paper. I also had a go at doing it on my book block, my scrappy block book. Block book. Block book. Yeah. <laughs> Can't speak. I also had a go at doing it on this as well. So it, it's about experimenting with the inks that you've got. It's about experimenting with the papers that you've got to see if you can create the background that you actually want to create. All right. Now, I'm a bit, bit miffed because somehow I've got a water stain which has gone through all of my sheets. But I might be able to cover that up so I'm not panicking too much about that. So let me just put those papers to one side. Now, as I say, you, you might have to gather together a selection of papers to see what works best with what you've got. All right. Now, obviously, Diane uses her own ink sprays, which is the Dilutions range. And I've only got four colours. 
So I'm going to show you some different examples of the combination of these colours in a moment. There's obviously then as well the Tim Holtz Distress Spray Stains. So you could attempt at having a go with some of those. And then the Cosmic Ink Spray Mist. Um, these don't have the mica powder in. No, they don't have the mica powder in. I had to double check then. So it's the Cosmic Shimmer Mist. Shimmer Mist that has got the mica powder in. But this is an ink spray mist. Alright, so ink spray mist. Uh, which hasn't got the mica powder in. So it's about getting your sprays out. Having a go with all the different combinations of colours to be able to see what you can create to be able to then say that's the colour combination that I want because I can guarantee you the don't expect to do just one and think that you, that'll do you all right you're gonna have to play and experiment this one was using these are all using the dilution sprays so this was using the blue and the yellow so the greeny parts that you can see is obviously where the two inks have mixed together because blue and yellow make green, all right? Then this one was the blue and the purple. This one was the purple and the yellow. And where the colors have mixed together, you've got this sort of orangey reddy color so that worked out quite nice thought that looked quite autumnal this one look out look at that Urgh. um this one was a combination of the three which was the purple the yellow and the blue so where the colors have mixed together this is where you've got various other shades of colors coming through so I'm going to show you how I went about producing those before I take you on to the next step. And as I say, I did follow Diane's video. So basically she gets some water in a spray bottle and she sprays her page. Now remember that for me, I'm using these pages folded in half. Okay, because what Diane does is she inks up one side of her book and then she flips the pages over to be able to print it off. So um, so you could do just half of the page with ink and then fold this half over the top and press down to, to get the remainder of the ink. Or you can just cover the whole sheet in ink. All right. Now, one of the problems that I found with this paper, in fact, I want it on the smooth side. So that's the smooth side. Um, one of the things that I found with this paper is it is absorbing the ink and the moisture too quickly. All right. So you want something where the ink is going to sit on top of the surface for a little while. So I need to put plenty on. So I spray it with water first. So I spray it quite well because, as I say, this paper is so absorbent. And that was one of the problems that I was having with these inks and the technique. All right, and then I'm going to get the green and do a puddle of the green so that these are puddles and this is where I need to act quick because this is soaking up that puddle of ink really quickly. And so I want to, oh, I'm running out of my blue. Okay, so you can see there's lots and lots of ink on there and enough so that I can tilt it and move it around so that the colours start to mix and blend together so that you can get some interesting mixes of colours where they have blended together. Okay. And then she uses the toilet, the, the toilet roll, <laughs> the kitchen roll, and runs it over to take the excess ink off. Now I have come up with a little technique, which I'll show you at the end, using the, um, using the kitchen roll. All right. So 
she wants to, you want to take off the majority of the the moisture and then you need to dry it slightly with your heat tool now not to, so that it's bone dry but so that it's still got a little bit of dampness to it or as Di says in her or Diane says in her video you're not cooking a chicken so I'll come back in a minute oh no oh well I'll carry on drying because then you can see how long I'm going to take to dry it now if I flip this over can you see some of the ink has been has seeped through to the back so I'm going to dry the back of it as well now I found that drying this a little bit longer than Diane suggested worked a little bit better okay and in fact I'll show you on the sheets that have been left for a couple of hours to dry and we'll we'll see what the difference is so then you're going to need some stencils so let's do this one so I've got this alphabet stencil and basically what she then did was she she then sprayed this with water and she sprayed it with a, a fair bit of water because the inks the sprays are reactive to the water now again one of the things that I found was the water was seeping underneath quite quickly and it ends up doing uh, can you see that it looks as though it's smudging a fair bit and then she then flipped this over and imprinted the water off the top of the stencil okay so let's dry it again and when you have a look at dyes hers ends up being lovely and crisp but this I found really difficult to get a really nice crisp impression I did it with less water I did it with more water I tried all sorts of different ways and um, yeah struggled with it so let's try Tim Holtz now Tim Holtz does stuff like this as well and he's always come out beautiful so spray it with some water lift it up and it's left you can see that that dotty impression there and then spin it over and imprint the water from off the other side now I've got some pink dye on there as well so it's picked that up but not to worry okay and dry it again so that it gives me a nice ghosted background now as I say I didn't like the fact that it, it bled and I could not understand for the life of me I don't know whether you can see at the top here can you see that A, B, C very very subtle in the background but that's a lot crisper and, cl and clearer than that Q, R and W alright so that was whilst the paper was still relatively damp let's go on to one that's been inked up for a little while and see what happens okay so this piece um, has been drying for a little while so let's see how reactive to the uh, water and the stencil it is this time round now this is dry so when I touched the other one I could feel that it was still damp but this is it's not bone dry but it's dry <laughs> if that makes any sense at all okay I, I tried spritzing from high I tried spritzing from low I tried all sorts of different ways okay let's have a go right so four spritz of water leave it to sit there for a minute pick it up roll me toilet me kitchen roll I will keep calling it toilet roll my kitchen roll over it let's give it a quick dry oh, I don't know whether you can see that I'll hold it up close that is a lot crisper 
Yeah? Can you see that okay? Okay, let's have another go. Uh, let me just try that off a minute because I don't want the water underneath. Okay, let's do it with the numbers this time. So, one, two, three, four. Leave it there a second. Pick it up. Oh, I didn't, I didn't roller it, did I? <gasps> Keep forgetting little steps. Okay, roller it and then dry. And hopefully you can see that that is starting to show up quite nicely. So whilst Diane, when Diane did hers, the paper was still relatively damp. I found that it worked better on this Arteza paper when it was completely dry. All right, so that was the, the ghosting. I'll show you on some of the other papers now to uh, show you how it turned out on those. So this was on um, Hobbycraft's card. And again, it did that where it ended up all smudgy. Then it started to work. Um, I did another stencil on it. But you can see now why you really need to have a play with some different pages. And then I tried it again on another piece and it started to work a lot better. So I think it worked better for me when it was slightly drier. Um, yeah, so that's that one. And then I tried it on a book, on that book block, block book, book block page. And it worked out really nicely on that. So again, you can see the stencil and you can see the alphabet there as well. One of the other techniques that I tried as well was using a baby wipe. So this was from a, a new packet. And so it's, it's actually quite damp. And so I actually tried blotting off through the stencil. I hope I'm not rocking the... The camera too much. Let's try rubbing it a bit. Now it's not lifting too much of the ink up onto the, the baby wipe, but I'm hoping that it's reacting enough that you can start to see a bit of an effect. Now, as I say, I am now mixed media connoisseur. This might not work. Let's have a look. Oh, that was interesting. Let's try that off. So maybe that's another way forward, is to maybe use a baby wipe. Actually, that works out quite well. a bit more down here this is what I mean by like you just need to play because uh, you really don't know until you try these things whether something's going to work but with these pieces that I've done I'm going to um, write notes on the back so that I can go right this worked that worked that's how I did that that's how I did this thing is is that because of what I want to put on the top layer I need this to be subtle in the background All right so it doesn't want to be jumping out at me okay I'm going to show you the next step uh, on a different sheet of what I actually want to have a go at doing because I think that this might be the technique that I want to use on my piece in my book so I'll see you in a second okay so I've got this really big stencil um, and because of that, that watermark there, I want to try and get a big piece of that covered over. So I'm going to use Tim Holtz's Pic Picked Raspberry Distress Spray Stain. And I like the effect that this creates because I, I tried it on a piece earlier. So I'm just basically spritzing over the stencil. Okay, and then I'm going to pick it up and flip it over so you can see that it creates that image at the top 
and then if I pick this up and flip it over and sit it down it will do an imprint of what of the ink that was sprayed onto the front side of the stencil okay so I've now got an imprint of the the ink now the other thing that I did see if I can get it to do it was I sprayed it really lightly so it picked up just little spatters of the pink raspberry on top now it hasn't covered over that part there so if I use this I might have to cover that over with the word but it just starts to, to bring it all together. Now, this was when I really started playing. So I used my mica sprays on this one so that I've got that gold glistening bit. Now, the only thing that I found was, was that when you run your finger over it, it picks up the mica powder because the mica powder just sits on top. So that was a little bit disappointing. And then that was another piece that I played with. But it just creates really pretty images. Now, these I might not use as my piece, but I could cut these up into tags. Yeah, I might do that. So I'm going to show you uh, one more technique that I, I kind of picked up from having this play, uh, which you might find useful. So I saved all the bits of... Uh, kitchen roll that I'd, I'd rolled over because I was a bit like I need to do something with these so what I did was I sprayed it with water to reactivate the ink and then I just got a piece of plain just plain A to GSM copy paper placed it on top and just pressed into it And it starts to pick up the colour from off the, let me try the next one down, Ooh, that side might be better. So that if you're wanting to create a bit of a textured background, see how that one does. that side's working better because I can see it seeping through look but it starts to create a really nice textured background for pages to use in your journal so yeah just thought it was a good way of using up the spare ink that's on these paper towels that's quite pretty that and it's really quite textured looking as well yeah so really now it's it's a time for you to go off and go and have a play have a play with different papers with different inks and uh, see the color combinations that you can create have a go at doing the ghosting technique you might want to watch Diane's video though because as I say she maybe explains it a bit better than I can um, have a go with your stencils and really just have a play and then sort of find out which is the the type of background that you want to create and that's why i've split this video into two parts so i'm going to come back in the second part show you the piece that i've chosen um and how i'm going to go about adding the letters and the information on and how i'll finish it off thanks for joining me today see you in the next video bye for now